if I double x, what happens to y? This is the gist of a common sort of physics problem, examining if you understand a formula for proportions. For example, if I had distance equals one-half acceleration times time squared. In these proportionality problems, there's only one term, meaning there's no plus or minus signs. It's all about multiplication and division, so that if you double one thing, you might double another, or you might cut it in half, or you might multiply it by the square root of two, or four, or eight. What happens if you double the acceleration? Well, you double the distance. What happens if you double the time? You get four times the distance. How did I do that? One way to tackle these problems is to write the same formula twice, if you're uncertain how it works. This is a bit long, but it gets the job done while you're first learning. Distance two is one half acceleration two time two squared. Distance one is one half acceleration one time one squared. Well, you can actually divide their corresponding sides the one halves cancel. So now we have everything written in a proportion. If they say, what happens if I double the time? That means that t2 is 2t1. We have a2, 4t1 squared over a1, t1 squared. And the t1 squared cancels out. Assuming that they were only talking about changing the time, then the accelerations are equal and they cancel out. And we get this number four. Now, what does the number four mean? It equals d2 over d1. d2 is 4 times d1. The distance was quadrupled when you doubled the time. Now, when I'm doing this myself, I don't have to go through that procedure. I can tell at a glance. How am I doing that? First, what's the multiplier on the input? The t is getting doubled. Like, okay, so I'm taking a 2. What power is the t raised to? It's raised to the second power. So 2 to the 2. 4 is the multiplier on the distance. There, I got there in a few seconds, uh, instead of having to go through all this. Now, this is actually a better procedure if you're you know, changing three things at once. Saying, okay, I moved from Earth to a planet with four times the mass, but double the radius, and what happens to the surface gravity? Let me show you a bunch of examples. Here are five physics formulas. You don't need to know particularly what they're talking about. We're just talking about the math right now. I'm keeping all the letters constant except for one and asking what happens to another one. So two variables are going to change. We want to know how those changes are related. In the formula I equals one half mr squared, if I triple, for example, m, what happens to I? By what factor will that change? Well, it turns out that it will triple because the m and the i are both in the numerators, so they are directly proportional. And the m isn't squared, and neither is the i. 1 half mv squared. If I triple v, what happens to k, assuming the m is constant? If v is tripled, you imagine a 3 there, 3 squared is 9. It will be multiplied by a factor of 9. Force is g m1 m2 over r squared. I'm going to change r, and I want to know what happens to f. If I triple r, the r is down here. So I get a 3 squared, which is 9 in the denominator. It's going to be 1 9. u equals mgh. So let's mix it up a little. Let's say that u is going to be held constant this time. If we triple h, what happens to m? Well, the m isn't solved for here, but we can tell that if this is going to equal a constant and part of it goes up, another part has to go down. If the h triples, the m has to become one-third. And finally, in this case, volume is four-thirds pi r cubed. If I triple the radius, what happens to the volume? Three cubed is 27. It's going to be multiplied by 27. So there's five examples. Now, how did I do that so fast? I didn't go through any long algebraic manipulations. In fact, I basically did it in my head, just looking at the formula. So what's going on? Well, it helped for that most of these were already solved for the variable I want to know the effect on. The exception was this, and I want to know how m will change. So in fact, I could write m equals u over gh to make it easier to see. Uh, and aside from that, they were all already solved for the output variable. 
and I'm only changing one variable at a time. So I look for the thing I'm changing, and I look to see, is it on the top or on the bottom? If it's on the top and I triple it, the thing's going to get bigger. If it's on the bottom and I triple it, it's going to get smaller. How many factors of three? Well, that's going to depend on what power the variable is raised to. So since this m was just m to the first, if I triple this, I triple that. And because this v was squared, I'm going to get 3 squared over here. And because this r was on the bottom, that's why it was a 1 ninth instead of a 9, because that r is getting squared. r is what we're changing. It's getting tripled. So we're getting times 9 on the bottom, so 1 ninth. In this version, you can see that if I change h by tripling it, that's on the bottom. So we get a 1 third. Maybe that makes that a little easier to see. And finally, for this one, if I'm tripling r, that gets 3 times bigger. 3 to the third is 27. So you can see it's possible to do these very quickly. And I hope with practice that you will be able to. It'll save you a lot of time and points. Now for a trickier example. Uh, f is g m1 m2 over r squared. I want to change two things at once. I want to double the m and triple the r. What happens to f? So implicitly, we're assuming that m2 and big G are constant. They are not changing. The only things that are changing are the things we said are changing and by the factors we said. So how do we work this out quickly? Well, take them one at a time. If all it was was double m1, m1's on the top, so f will get bigger. It's the first power, so just by a factor of 2, because I doubled m1, I'll double f. So times 2. But then I triple r. r is in the bottom. Triple, that's a 3. It's squared, that's 9, so 1 ninth. Times 2 and times 1 ninth. So the force is 2 ninths of the prior force. Again, if you label the first situation with 1 and the second situation with 2, then we would say that F2 is equal to 2 ninths of F1. So the new force is smaller than the original. Another way they might ask the question is, what is the ratio of F1 to F2, or F2 to F1 is like that. F2 to F1 is 2 over 9. If they asked for F1 to F2, that would be 9 over 2. But they're not likely to ask that one. It's usually new over old. But watch the wording carefully. One more, this one with a square root. If I double both T for temperature and M for molar mass, what happens to the VRMS? Well, if you're doubling T, this is inside a square root. You'd get a factor of 2, but it's in a root, so it would be square root of 2. But the molar mass is also doubled. That's on the bottom, so that'd be a half. And it's in a square root, so it'd be times 1 over square root of 2. Square root of 2 over square root of 2 equals 1, and the VRMS ends up unchanged. Sometimes changes will cancel each other out. So I hope that gives you some idea of the possibilities and how you might quickly solve problems like this. Uh, practice with a bunch of other formulas. Obviously, you don't even know the details of how the formula works. You're just practicing the math. Good luck.